large buffer tank is in the corner of the garage and it's right next to the boiler that's right behind me here. The various pipes coming into and out and all this actually does is stores hot water. Now it stores it at a much higher temperature than the domestic hot water cylinder. That will only store temperature at below scalding, below around 60, 63 degrees Celsius, typically 58 for a family house like this. This is rated at 500 litres at 95 degrees Celsius. I don't believe we actually sort at 95, it's closer to 75. So that's a sort of hot temperature you need for your radiators, okay? So this is basically circulating through the radiators, providing hot water, and circulating through the domestic hot water cylinder to heat that up. It, it is, of course, not our fresh water supply, which comes from elsewhere. This is a pressurized system, as they have on the continent. There are various valves that allow it to bleed um, air that builds up in the cylinder, and various inputs and outputs and, and isolation um, valves, as you can see. Looks quite complicated, but all it does is allows the boiler to behave as most efficient. Your gas boiler is quite small, quite a small thermal mass, and it will actually work quite efficiently if you keep going it on and off, on and off, hard, working it quite hard. The biomass boiler works differently. It actually requires what we call batch burning. It only likes to operate once or twice a day for a good long burn, store up the hot water, and then switch off. So basically what the buffer tank does, exactly as the name suggests, is storing hot water that will then be used through the heating circuit and the hot water circuit to heat up your hot water and your rooms. Next to the buffer tank on the floor, you have a couple of expansion tanks. And if you follow the pipe work around slowly, behind our workbench where it disappears and then up again, you find a number of heating circuit pumps. It probably isn't important that you remember all this, but just for information, there's three basic circuits here. What you see here is a pump, the black one here, that controls the heat pumping from the buffer tank to the domestic hot water cylinder. This one here controls the heat flowing to the radiators and there is, if you spot, a third one. Now, why would we have that one? That's because we have an unusual arrangement here. Here is the gas. It's a quite a modern condensing gas boiler, and that is still connected. We are a gas-connected house. Now, that only kicks in if we run out or we switch off the biomass boiler. So, essentially, if we run out of fuel, if the wood pellets run out, so we go away for some reason and we don't fill it up, then the the biomass boiler detects that it's not burning and it will switch over to the gas boiler. At that point, these secondary circuits all kick in and they start to feed the buffer boiler. So essentially, the gas boiler then becomes the biomass boiler and behaves in the same way, is controlled in the same way. And once or twice a year, we'll switch the biomass boiler off to make sure that the gas boiler will kick in. Now here we see the normal gas boiler on the left and the pipes, so we follow them all the way up disappear finally into the ceiling at about this point here. They'll continue under the floor upstairs heading to the domestic hot water cylinder and elsewhere they'll be heading towards the radiator system.